All right, y'all, welcome, welcome. We got a special edition of Opinionated Facts, all right? Got my boy Shaq here online with me, and it's me and myself, Hollywood. Y'all know who I am. All right, so look, this will be our NFL edition, our off-season edition for NFL teams. All right, so this is how it's going to go. I like bringing on additional people, like speaking to additional people. So I got my mans here, right? Kansas City Chiefs fan. Respect to him. I'm still going to rock my Atlanta stuff. He knows how it goes. I don't play but my stuff, man. Mm. Oh, it's my Falcons. I don't play. Hey, look, how are we going to do this, man? We're going to go over how your 2020 season went. Then we're going to go into, you know, what you guys are gaining in free agency, what you're losing in free agency, you know. And then we're going to go over your draft pick. The draft is around the corner. We know that's coming up. And then we're going to look at your 2021 season outlook. All right? So go ahead and introduce yourself, bro. How long you been Chiefs fan? You know how long things been going for you? Uh, man, I'm a Chiefs fan. Been a Chiefs fan since we was gonna say '93. Um, back in the good old days when we had the good, good players, the, the greatest Chief of all times, and I don't care what nobody says, is Derek Thomas. We can argue all day long. DT, the greatest Chiefs of all time. Um, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, born and raised. Sadly, I live in Bronco Country, but it's still Chiefs Kingdom anywhere I go, man. Hey, it is what it is, man. Broncos country. And like they do anything. I mean, so it's, it's all good. It's definitely not. <laughs> all good. But hey, we're going to open this up right now. So the first thing we're going to have to hit on, bro. Those Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. What happened? Like, gee. <laughs> no excuses being made. Um, a lot of it comes down to coaching. And a lot of it also played an injury was a key factor. We lost Eric Fisher in the AFC title game. And once we lost Fisher, that's kind of like the heart and soul of our offense. Um, so when you take out a key component like that or he goes out with an injury, your offensive line is shaked, they're rattled because now they're, they're leading force, their captain of that offensive line is no longer there. Then Mike uh, Swats was out with a back injury. You can't – I mean, you can't win games with injured and backups. Like, you just can't do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, regular season you could do it. Y'all need a contingency plan in place or something. But look, man <laughs> – Y'all got y'all had Mahomes running around like he stole something, dog. Like, come on, man, he shouldn't be running like that. Bro, man, threw for hey, like man. 40, he threw for like forty seven hundred yards, but he's running around like he a running back. What the fuck? Look, all credit to Tampa Bay's defense because if you really look at the way that defense is set up and how that coaching staff is set up, even when we played them the first time around, we got them because they chose to stay stay in man coverage. That first half of the game, the first, when we played them earlier in the season, Tyreek Hill had two hundred something yards in the first quarter. Right. And it looked like it looked like it was a way to a blowout. But then they what did they do? They made adjustments and they ended up losing the game. I want to say either by three or either by a touchdown. But they made those adjustments. So playing Kansas City the second time around, they knew what they had to do. And then when you add in the fact that you're missing your starting tackling on both sides, there's not much you can do. We had two guys blocking each other on one of the plays in the Super Bowl. I mean, you, I'm not making no excuses. That was Jesus. It was horrible. Like, he shot through the gap so quick, and they was blocking each other. Like, they didn't know what was going on. I mean, and I can't blame Patrick Mahomes. I can only blame the fact that we had injuries. Now, one thing I'm going to say about the Super Bowl that a lot of people might not agree with, how do you call 11 penalties against one whole team and four against the other? Look, at we call that the Tom Brady effect. You got to love it, right? You got to love it, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I- 11, I mean, hell, you you, you got to be able to limit some of those things because when the defense is constantly on the field, constantly on the field, and the offense can't get nothing going, you're, you, hey, that spells disaster in my territory because there is no way that our offense can move the ball and our defense can get off the field. And then this is where I kind of blame coaching because as a defensive coordinator, Spag, or even Andy Reid, the head coach should have called a timeout, got the guys together. And a lot of our penalties, if you look at it, came at third down, third and four, third and six. We're right there making a stop, and all of a sudden we can't get off the field. Oh, this is a pass interference call. Oh, this is – well, this, that – it was always pass interference or holding. One of the two. Nothing opposite of that. And you can't get off the field. Look, y'all, the score was 31-9, if I'm not mistaken. You know how many touchdowns y'all true. to even make a dip in that? Like, come on. Like, you know – I think momentum plays a big factor. And then if you think about what else Kansas City had going on, not making excuses, our linebackers coach didn't make the trip. He's dealing with, you know, he had his own personal problems outside of the field that led him to missing the Super Bowl. So when then when media day comes around, you know, the number one question is, oh, how are you handling it today? How are you handling this? 
It's what's going on with Brent Reed. Hey, what are you going to do about Brent Reed? Who's going to coach those linebackers? Willie Gay, the starting inside linebacker, he also got hurt in the AFC title game. So there goes, you know, there goes a little bit of our anchor. Now, I'm not going to say he's the heart and soul of that defense because to me it's Tyron Matthew, the landlord. Now, when it comes to him, he runs that defense. That is his defense. landlord tried talking shit to the wrong person, but, you know. He, you hey, he learned, man. He learned. You can't do that. You can't hype <laughs> up, you know what happened? You, you, you can't talk that. like that at the time, man. Yeah, you can't. But, you know, I, mean, I think with the healthier offensive line, with the less off the field distractions, I feel as if that's a different outcome of the Super Bowl. You take away the injuries, you take away the less off the field distractions. I don't see Tampa Bay blowing us out like that, and I honestly don't even see Tampa Bay winning the Super Bowl at all because yeah, we're just too I'm, much I'm of a high powered offense. I'm gonna be real with you though. I'm gonna be real with you though. I didn't even see y'all making the Super Bowl, and this is only because one, when y'all played against the Browns, y'all should have lost that game. How do you figure? Uh, Mahomes went out. Mahomes went out. All he did. Just go down there and get into the end zone. That was it. One time with Mahomes out. That's all they had to do. And that was on them. They messed up down the line. I blame Baker. I blame their coaches. But it's all simple like this. The Browns could have beat y'all when Mahomes went out. That was it. That was danger time for y'all. Danger time. It was. But, but you, anything look, look, was possible, baby. Anything was anything possible. Anything is possible. But look at the look at the way Indy Reid coached that up. And better yet, look at the way the defense played. Look at Frank Clark coming off the edge. Chris Jones coming up the middle. You know what's funny about the Cleveland Browns? They have an identity of running. All they did all season long was run the ball down your throat. And then once they ran the ball down your throat, they hit you with the little dinks and dumps. And then they hit you with the play action pass and got you right. Odell got hurt. Now he's got to watch Jarvis. And David Njoku, he's not a – like, he can catch, but he ain't a solid catcher like that. He's not a no, Travis Kelsey. You, he's not a Greg Kittle. You can't, you, can't, you can't use David Njoku because he really didn't play much in that Browns offense. Now, who played much in that Browns offense? Other tight ends, and they were very serviceable. All right? Don't get me wrong, but you were right. The Browns were a run-down-your-throat team. However, when they played y'all, they went away from running down your throat. I don't think they went away from it. They just couldn't get it. Look at the – they didn't start running until it was too late in the game. By that time and point, the game was over. Yeah, yeah, Mahomes went down, but you got to establish the run early. And they didn't establish the run early. They was like, oh, we're just going to go out here and try to match you tick for tack. No offense in the NFL currently can match Kansas City tick for tack, period, when it comes to scoring. Let, let's yeah, let, go say that part, when it comes to scoring. However, when it comes defense, to scoring. Your defense, if I'm not mistaken – I could be mistaken right now, but I think they were either the 16th ranked defense or maybe a little higher than that. Y'all weren't y'all weren't that great of a defense. So, 17th. 17th. See, I gave you credit. I said 16th. But you know, I take the credit. <laughs> you take the credit. But see, that's how the Browns should have taken advantage of that. Y'all defense wasn't as strong. Uh, I would say that the Super Bowl show how strong your defense wasn't at that time and shows that you guys mm. are on the defense side of the ball. But either way. That game was the Browns. They lost, but y'all, Andy, no. Reed, Andy Reed, he's a hell of a coach, man. Even with Chad Henney at quarterback, he did. He <laughs> a hell of a quarterback. He's a hell of a coach, hey, man. man. My man Chad Henney got him a playoff win, and that's <laughs> and that's all. You can't take that away from him. <laughs> that's all. I, I will Andy say Reed. our defense looked weak in the Super Bowl. I think a lot of people hear me out before you make that face. A lot of people fail to understand, like, and you get it. You know how it is. If you spend so much time on the field, eventually big plays are going to happen. Eventually, I mean, you can only, and, I, and I'm not making no excuses. You can only dig deep for so long. If, let's look, at, let's take a look at you guys. The 28 to 3 Super Bowl. Your defense was blowing right. them boys out the water. We're not here to talk about my team. All right. we're, we're not, but we're talking that, about years ago. That's years we're, ago. We can pick any year you want. We're going to talk about defense. Your defense couldn't hold those Patriots at all. Y'all blew a twenty-eight to three lead. Hey, well, and here then it is. You didn't have. You didn't show an ounce of fight on offense. But here it is. But here it is. Now you talk about ounce of fight. Ounce of fight. Y'all only managed to muster nine points. That's you know, and that's pretty disappointing. When you have a quarterback who passed for nearly five thousand yards, uh, your running back. That's another thing I was disappointed in. Y'all didn't run the ball as much, and he was having a pretty good game running the ball. But you had all these talented receivers, could no one get open. Your quarterbacks on defense, Rashawn Breeland, for example, 
he was caught with so many penalties because he couldn't cover water. Like, hey, I, man, I am not a Breland supporter. I think he's one of our worst in the secondary. Him and Sorensen both. They Sorensen can't cover, although he does make plays here and there. My only thing with Breland is Breland is the type of guy. Great example. Right after speaking of the 2020 season, right after that Raider game, that was his first. Or that Raider, the first time he lost to the Raiders, that was his first game back. He had an interception and five tackles. On the opposite side of that, look at what he did. He couldn't hold a receiver under 80 yards. And then on top of it, the game went in play. If you really pay close attention, who is that they running on? Rashad Breeland. He cannot cover. He he's not a speed guy. He can't cover the speed. Now he can maybe do the slot, or he, we can drop him back for maybe in the nickel. I don't know what we need to do to get away from Breeland, but we got to get away from that because to me personally, Breeland is a problem. Now, I really wish we would attack. You know, I know this is jumping a little ahead, but in a free agency, I wish we would have went aggressively after uh, Patrick Peterson. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you; he's still the second best corner in all of football right now. And you know what? We are we got, we're about to hit that. Can you speaking on Bashan Breeland and Dan Sorensen? So we're looking at your free agents, you know, that you're losing here. So you lose them, <laughs> Eric Fisher, uh, Mr. Schwartz is one big name. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he was average when he played with y'all, let's be real. Uh, Daniel Sorensen. Now, you were talking about Daniel Sorensen. However, he led y'all in tackles. So that's kind of a surprise right there that you want that guy gone. But you also have Sean <laughs> Freeland and Damian Williams, the running back. So looking at that. I know you have your feelings about Bashan Breeland, but who did you really want back? I mean, come on. If we were going to keep anybody out of all of them, and this is even, I'm going to say this is a stretch because he hasn't even been since we drafted him in, I believe, 2013, somewhere in that frame at the number one pick, it would have been Fisher. That's the only one. And even Sam bringing him back is a little hard because we paid him the first go around after his rookie contract, and he got hurt. His groin was hurting him. And then from his groin, it was something else. He was constantly hurt. Then we got Mahomes and our offense started rolling and started gelling. And those injuries wasn't the same. Now I can't, I get it. He's a 300 pound lineman and he tore his Achilles. So for that, I can't sit up here and say, well, you know, he'll be all right. He'll be back. It's hard to be a big man to come back from an Achilles tear. It's very rare that they do. Like even Kobe, after he tore his Achilles, he still had problems and he's not 300 pounds. Rest in peace to the goat. However, on the flip side of that Fisher, you know, 300 pound lineman and, you know, you're a bigger guy. It's going to be a lot harder for you to recover. Um, You know, so that's going to take time. Now, as far as Breland, he's got to go. I have no love for him. It's not a love hate relationship. I just feel as if he's hurting our secondary more than he's helping it. And if I'm not mistaken, majority of the penalties in the Super Bowl was on Breland. He couldn't cover. Well, see, that's it too. But y'all had Bashan Breland in my in my opinion, after watching him when he was with Washington and all, all the other he played for, you look at him, he's not fit to be your number one or your number two guy. I would have him, that would be it. That would, he would be a nickel corner in the package I would have for a team. That was it. But y'all had him as, well, you had injuries. I mean, you didn't you didn't have, you know, people that you wanted there, so you had to use Bashan Breland. And he showed right. his flaws, but he also had some good moments. But he wasn't the guy y'all needed, especially against, a Tampa Bay offense that had Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin. Uh, you got Leonard Fournette out of the backfield. I mean, he looked like – You got Gronk at tight end. You got Gronk at tight end. You know what I mean? So, out of all that, out of all that, uh, that was a little disappointing. However, with Eric Fisher leaving, uh, he is at the tackle position, which I did manage to pick up a very, very, very good guard in uh, Joe Thune. All right? So, that is actually – great pickup for y'all, especially losing two starting tackles. So, I mean, free agency is still going on. Who do you want? You know, right now in free agency, there's not – Patrick Peterson's gone. That hurts. I really wanted A.J. Green because, to me, Sammy Watkins, and this is my whole feeling about A.J. Green, and I just – hear me out. A.J. Green is a, a sure-hand catcher. He's an excellent route runner, in my personal opinion. In Cincinnati, he didn't have the motivation to stay healthy. He didn't have the motivation to get back out on the field because Cincinnati's trash, let's be honest. In Kansas City, I think with the right guidance, with the right people, 
let's let's you know he would have got himself together like look at Sammy Watkins Sammy was also injury prone early on in his career Sammy didn't get hurt until last season after spending three or four seasons with us that's his first injury in three or four seasons so then you got Tyreek Hill who takes a lot of pressure off we got McCall Harmon we got uh Pringle we have Kelsey I think AJ would have had time to rest his body and heal up and we can use him on those big like all those drop balls we talked about in the Super Bowl I don't think AJ, if you put the ball in AJ Green's catch radius, he's not dropping the ball. That's my personal opinion. Now, everyone might feel differently, but I rather have AJ Green in those type of moments versus Sammy Watkins, who's a little old, not as fast, and definitely can't catch as good. Now, I will give Sammy his due respect. Sammy is the un- unsung hero of Super Bowl 50, uh, 51, um, where we beat the 49ers. He beat Richard Sherman on a fly route. I give him his props for that. But where was you at this past Super Bowl? And I honestly can't tell you if he caught one ball or not because his name wasn't – he wasn't a big factor for me like that. So the people that's still out there in free agency, I mean, I honestly feel like we – like you said, we had to go get lineman help from Holmes. And signing Kyle Long out of retirement, to me, smartest move we did. And the reason why I say it's the smartest move we did is because, one, he's rested. Two – He's, he was a great uh, he was a great guard when he, or tackle. I'm sorry when he was out with Chicago, he was out there doing his thing. Now the environment in Chicago is a lot different than Kansas City, because you have those guys around you who are, who want to win, who are willing to win. So I think bringing in Long was a good idea, and somehow still in Thune from uh, the Patriots was even more of a shock to me because I didn't see that happening. I'm not going to sit up and say, well, yeah, I saw it. I saw that happen. No, 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 no. I saw that happen for some reason. I don't know why. I did I not. <laughs> but, hey, but this is another thing, too. Y'all have to look at y'all lost. You're losing Sammy Watkins. He's, he's just going to be gone. I don't see him coming back. Two I'm not worried need, about losing Sammy. Hey, two things y'all really need help with. One, the receiver position, you can get, let's say, a uh, Ty Hilton. You know, he, he's still – T.Y. Hilton, you know what I mean? He's still available. That would be another decent guy y'all can get. But also, y'all have to look at the running back position. Now, <laughs> this is funny. You, oh, please bring it in here because I want to hear this. You're looking at me like that. This is funny. So, your top running back, you know, Clyde edwards Yeah, 803 yards on the ground. That's perfect. That's great for a virtual running back. However, your second leading rusher was Patrick Mahomes with 308 yards. You okay. can't just put everything on the heels of a rookie. You had Damian Williams. You had Le'Veon Bell. But where was the help for the rookie? That's my thing. You have to have a, a good running game. I know y'all want to be known as a passing team. And you're known as that. But right. you have to be able to establish a run as well. And with only one running back doing something, that's kind of that's kind of a big problem. That's fair. I can hear you loud and clear on that, but I want you I want you to hear me as well. We did utilize our other running backs. Le'Veon Bell, in my personal opinion, is past his prime of running. Now, catching out the backfield, doing the screens, doing the dink and dunks and running the routes, he's a lot better than Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And when it comes to running the ball, when when you look at the way our running back ran all season long, he was averaging somewhere between 4.5, 5.3 yards a carry. And then on top of it, he wasn't going down off of first contact. Now, that is a lot to put on a rookie. However, as one running back. That's yeah. one, but you know, Daryl Williams came in at the end. My whole issue with, uh oh, did I lose you? Okay, I'm sorry, I thought I lost you. Um, yeah. My whole issue with Damian Williams is with him sitting out. When we made our minds up that we were going after running back, he already said, I'm sitting out this season. And it got confirmed again once we drafted Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now, here's my thing he could have came back and he could have performed, could he not have? Everyone wants to say, oh, it's because of COVID reasons. No, what I think he did was he looked at the running back situation and says, there's not enough There's not enough for us to eat. You got Le'Veon Bell back there. And if Le'Veon, let's be honest, Le'Veon in Pittsburgh when he was there was a monster. He was a patient runner. He hid behind his line. We don't have a run offensive line. We have a pass protection offensive line. So that doesn't work in Le'Veon's favor. But then when we did run the ball, we did make some pushes. And Le'Veon did have a – he had a good solid game when he did run the ball. He didn't have no 100-yard game, no 80-yard game, 30 to 45. And that's okay because he's more of my pass blocker. Now, I will be honest and say this. I wish we would have never let Kareem Hunt go because if we did, if we didn't let Kareem Hunt go, 
we wouldn't even be having this conversation about our backfield because to me, Kareem Hunt was a total package. He can run out the backfield. He can catch out the backfield. He can move that ball across the plane. He can get out in the open and make those defenders hurt. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's young. He'll get there. He still has some time to go. Le'Veon Bell, I hope we bring him back for the simple fact is he's our better back out of the backfield when it comes to catching the ball. And the way that we run the tricks, plays, and all that, I mean, we can do what um, the Ravens do when they won the, the Heisman formation. Now, granted, we can't do it in that sense, but you can put Le'Veon Bell back there with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. You can run the read option with them two right there. You can do it with Patrick Mahomes, who's also mobile. I feel as if we do have to utilize Le'Veon Bell a little bit more, even Daryl Williams. I feel as if if we do get up on big on teams, maybe we need to start running the ball, gassing out that defense. That's what, you, that's what, that's what every team needs to do. If you're up, you better run that ball down their throat. Just like you to see every to team foul. can't do that. You could have run down their throat. Now, you could have done that. But you can't say you couldn't have done that. You could have done that. Le'Veon Bell had 254 yards rushing for y'all for the whole entire season. And that's good for four yards a carry. Now, I know you want to say, oh, he was our passing back, that that, that seventh third. Y'all could at least try to utilize more packages, more running packages, especially in the game, just to still the the win. I mean, you only lost twice last year. Uh, And that was to uh, the Raiders and the Chargers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we we threw the last game. And that's it. You should have went undefeated, let's be real. And I I will will say y'all should have went undefeated. Patrick Mahomes is just that good. Travis Kelsey is a monster. That boy is a monster. Travis Kelsey is a monster, but my only problem with Travis Kelsey is he can't catch the ball when he counts the most. Uh, it's hard but, to say that. <laughs> it's, no, because I'm telling you this as a Chiefs fan, man. What was it, third and five? And he dropped it wide open in the Super Bowl? Oh, hit so him square in his hands. He was. You see now? You went, you went straight after him. Where was Tyreek? Tyreek was double teamed. Tyreek was double teamed. You're saying that Travis Kelsey was not double teamed in chips like he was. He was, but on third and five, the ball hit you square dead in your hands and you dropped it. It's like this, though. You only have one receiver out there doing anything, period. And who was that? Travis Kelsey. He was the only one doing anything. You don't think That's funny because was- Pringle had 50. Pringle was probably our leader receiver in yards. You sure? Yeah, I want I want you to think about on that, that one. <laughs> I want you to think about that one because I know. <laughs> I want, no, I mean I, I know Pringle wasn't the leading receiver, one. but at least he caught things that came his way. At least he caught things. What, you know what? I'm gonna help you out real quick because I know my man. Travis Tell me out because let's go over it. Look at Travis Kelsey. He was targeted 15 times. All right, so 10 catches, 150 yards. That's great for a tight end. Let's not forget this man is a tight end. Pringle. Okay. I think he got didn't get the receivers messed up. Pringle had one catch for three yards. Not Pringle. Not Pringle. The only other person that was making some catches was Tyreek Hill. He had seven for seven three. Other than that, the next leading receiver had two catches. How many drops? But do they go over how many drops? Look. If he was targeted 15 times and top 10 passes, I'm good with that from Travis Kelsey. I'm not putting all my money on my tight end to be catching every single thing out there when I got receivers out here who should be burned by everybody. However, y'all were getting rushed. It was a Tampa Bay defense. Y'all went short passes, but no one could catch it. Not a single person. Except for Travis Kelsey. <laughs> give that man his due. Like he, he I give him his dues, man. But he, can, he, hey, he got to step it up. Because we're going That's back good. to the Super Bowl. We can hope it. We can hope so. <laughs> I called it last year. I called it again. Hey, we can call it. We can call it all we want to. Let's, but let's let's understand this. You know, teams are getting better. Teams are getting better. You think they didn't watch that Super Bowl and try to take notes? <laughs> Here's the thing. You can take notes all you want, but the recipe is going to change again. Well, let's hope the recipe changes again. Because that last recipe, man, y'all have some nasty ass gumbo right there. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that shit was dirt. <laughs> the way I see it is we got Long and uh Thuny. There goes our we're gonna we're gonna adjust our offensive line and we're gonna get it together. Then the only offensive lineman that started in the Super Bowl from the original season, we we signed him back. Our offensive line will be okay. 
Me personally, Kyle Long or yeah, Kyle Long is going to be the one that leads that offensive line. He's going to be the captain. The vet's going to come in. He's going to get these guys where they need to be. He's going to give them something that some of these guys don't have. He's going to give them that experience. Hey, do this, do that, cut this way, block this way, chip here, focus here. He's going to be the one that brings that offensive line back to where it should be. Now, with that being stated and said, I expect Edwards Allaire to run a lot more next season going forward. I expect him to be that per- – I expect him to have – I'm not going to say the full Kareem Hunt factor – but I expect him to be just as explosive as Kareem Hunt was in our offense. You know what? Y'all, y'all are spending a lot of a five seven running back. I think he five seven. I might be giving him a little, you know, a little credit on that. He might. Hey be man, like, my man's eight. five nine on a good day. Hey look. But I mean, let's okay. Let's be honest. Let's look at the history of short running backs. Work done. Good running back, and he played with y'all, if I'm not mistaken. Work done. They play with y'all. Oh, okay. I just have to make sure. So you got work done. You got uh, Deuce Staley out of Philly, who was another good running back. Deuce Jerome Bettis, the bus. Let's how talk about Deuce, How tall was Deuce Staley? Uh, Deuce was like 5'8"? Five, five, He's about 5'9", five, actually. Deuce five, eight, five, nine. Five, That's a good soft size for a running back coming to the league. Now, if you're undersized, you know, this is one of the smallest running backs I remember. You have, we had a 5'6", Jaquiz Rogers playing for the South. You know what I mean? He got hit a couple see. times. That was it. Now, don't get me wrong, Clyde Eric Hilaire showed that he was a contributor piece to y'all offense. He was a very, very important piece. But you will need another solid run back behind him. There's no reason, no excuse why the backup running back shouldn't have at least 500 yards rushing. At least. Take the Mark off my the- words. Mark my words. Clyde Edwards Hilaire will rush for 1,000 yards next season. Whether it's Darrell Williams as the backup or if it's Le'Veon Bell, they'll rush for 400. Well, we'll see what happens. But in light of that, we're going to move on to draft picks now. You can also get a run back into the draft. But we're looking at y'all draft picks. So uh, your first three rounds, you, you only see your picks there. So you have 31st pick, uh, the 63rd pick in the second round, and the 94th pick in the third round. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of these uh, mock drafts. Have y'all projected to take offensive tackle? I, for one, believe y'all should take offensive tackle as well. And a name that pops up and that should be available in that later round uh, is uh, Sam Cosme from Texas. That would be a great pick for y'all. That's in my opinion. And I think y'all should use one of your other picks for a good backup running back, just in case Le'Veon doesn't come back or Durell doesn't come back. You got you to gotta look at these things. So who do you want, ideally, on your Chiefs? I know this is going to be a surprise for you. But this goes back into we got to get rid of Bre- Breland. We are in a 3-4 base defense. Now, if he's there, I want Greg Newsom, Greg Newsom the third out of Northwest. He's mm. a cornerback. I like the physicality. I like the way he plays. I think he could be – it was a good comparison. I see him being a lot physical, and I don't – I see him being a number a physical number three. I'm not going to put him out there and say, oh, he needs to be a number two. I'll give him a number three. And then I think with Tyron Matthew back there also helping out in the secondary. And then you got LeJarius Sneed, who also had a great year. You talk about draft picks that we did in the past two years now. I'm going to be honest with you. LeJarius Sneed and Jawan Thornhill, we picked Sneed up last year. And the year before that in the last draft, we picked up Thornhill. The way that those two played, especially Thornhill, Thornhill was amazing before his AC, uh, he tore his uh, uh, ACL. So when it comes to picking out these secondary guys, I feel like we could shock everybody and go get Greg Newsom the third. And I feel like we have, but once again, he could fall to New Orleans. So it all depends on how New Orleans play that. Me personally, if he's still there in the first round, look, don't go out right now and go get an offensive tackle. You just signed, you signed a veteran, you signed another young guy who's still good and he has great coaching from Belichick. Go get a cornerback and help out that secondary because we're going to need that. Don't get me wrong. Like you just said, Mike Evans. Miller, uh, Godwin, uh, Brown, those guys, some of them are speedy, some of them are big. We need someone to put a hat on them. We need them to be physical. We need them to bump them at the line. You get a young kid out like that and you get him trained up with like how Tyron Matthew is. Tyron Matthew, and I love it, in the honey badger. He's aggressive. He will be right there on the line. He's going to be in your face. He talked to the GOAT. Now, granted, it cost us, but he still talked that talk to the GOAT. And when you think about it, 
I like this Newsom kid out of Northwestern, man. That is my pick. I think if we can, that needs to be the first pick we make. And everyone could be wrong. However, I am also not too shy away of making a trade to go get the other tackle out of Oregon. Uh, Penny C- uh, Sewell huh. out of Oregon. Huh. Yeah, I'm saying right can, now, you, you can let that go. Just, just. If we can make a trade to Cincinnati, man. Are you what? Hey. What, what, do, you, what, what, do, you have, what do you have to offer? You, you pick 31st in the first round. Cincinnati sucked. What I would give Cincinnati is because they just let go of Geo Atkins. So I would offer Tyree Taco Kill? Charleston, the defensive end. Yeah, you gonna give a Tyree Kill? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, they ain't taking no damn taco. <laughs> so damn mind they take some tacos. They ain't taking that take shit. tacos a couple. Take nah. tacos a couple future first round draft picks. Nah, they ain't stupid. They ain't taking that. That's terrible. Like what? Are we all want. Hey, we'll I give mean, you a we'll give y'all the thirty first pick and Taco Charlton. That's a help. No, they hang up. No, uh, you know what? I would if we. So I would send them Le'Veon Bell. Send them Bell. They're gonna hang up again. Come on, man. Bell still got some value. I, I see. I see what you just tried to do there. Do you realize who their running back is down there? You think they would? Oh, let's get Le'Veon Bell over Joe Mixon. They're fine. They're you okay. mean the same? You mean the same Joe Mixon who shows up half the games but not all the games? You look at what happened to them. What do they need? They need a receiver or a tackle. Y'all have none to provide to them. <laughs> they can have uh, Pringle. <laughs> they can, they gonna throw him away like a can of Pringles, but. Like, they ain't gonna want nah, man, um, I know that's out of there, but I think we definitely need to go after that cornerback out of Northwestern. That's my personal opinion. Now, if we do go get the tackle out of Texas, not bad. I'd, you know, maybe he'd be good and he can work his way into the starting lineup. But I think he's going to definitely need to be groomed by Mr. Long. And I'm just going to be completely honest. Offensive tackles out of college, unless they're coming out of the SEC from Bama or Florida, to be 100% honest with you, they really – they're not that good. You know, a lot of these – well, a, a lot of these lot, guys – A lot of them just can't sleep on. So, a lot of these guys, they can jump from little little schools and they still perform very great. So, especially with a tackle like him, I will say he's more, you know, prone to uh, a run blocking scheme. But he can be developed. That's the good thing about these players. They can be developed. Andy Reid was going to do what, he's do what he does, you know what I mean? So, I think – That'll be all right. So I think y'all have to look at uh, tackle, your cornerback position, and I think your third third knee overall will be on your line, your defensive line. So that's what you guys need to look at. You need more you need more rotational pieces on your defense. I think on the defensive line we go get uh, Mr. Atkins. You hope. I think he'll take a pay cut. Yeah. He 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 recorded one tackle last season. You can't be asking for top dollar and you only got one tackle all season. Hey, that's his body of work, though. They know who he is. True. And I think you add him to that defensive line with Chris Jones, Frank Clark, or well, Taco Charleston on a different day. No, don't mention Taco. All right. Come on, man. I like Taco, Taco. man. Yes, oh, we got Taco. You, you add him with those three alone. Jones, um, Clark. I forgot our other guards, our, our other defensive tackle, but you add him in there. There goes your pass rush. We'll see. We'll see if that's one of the guys you pick up. Now, speaking of that, you know you're trying to look at your next season and what you're going to get. So next season projection, all right? Me personally, and it's how I'm looking at it, you know, with players coming back, Bob Miller, uh, for example, with Denver Broncos, uh, the Patriots making the trades and the free agent signings that they did, their defense is going to look solid again. So with next season coming around the corner, I have y'all projected to have – a 13 and 3 season. 12 and 4 at the worst. I don't see y'all winning less than 12 games. All right. But I could be wrong. Like I said, these teams are getting better. They're, they're, they're developing more plans, uh, a lot of coaching changes. What do you see happening next year for your Kansas City? So, what I see happening, and this is honest, honest to God here 16 and 0, 14 mm. and 2. 16 and 0. That's pretty bold. Well, the way our schedule's lined up, we don't have a tough team besides our division. And in our division, we got the Raiders. I'm not – look, all due respect to the Chargers and the Broncos, 
even with Vaughn coming back, they don't have no offense. If you're telling me right now that you would take Locke on your team over Matt Ryan, something's wrong with you. I ain't taking nobody. Like, hey, look, we already we already <laughs> so we can't even draft a quarterback. Hey, Matt got to go though. Mm-hmm. Matt got to go. But you know, all jokes aside, no, Locke is not the answer. They have no offensive weapons. They can't do nothing offensively. They got Melvin Gordon, Mr. Fumbler. Let's move. Let's just move past that team completely offensively. Defense is going to get tired if they're out there too long. So let's look at the Chargers. The Chargers got Herbert, rookie quarterback. You can see over the line, he can get the ball where it needs to be. He's decently accurate. However, on the flip side of that, you got injured receivers. Keenan Allen's always hurt. Keenan Allen, when he's healthy, probably one of the best receivers in the league, if not top five. All right. So what you just said was, you know, you see you got on 16 0. Now, I'm going to throw this at you. Because one sixteen and zero means oh you got a pretty fairly easy schedule, but no you don't you still have the Buffalo Bills all right you still have no the, competition you have the Chargers you can't you can't call them no competition <laughs> you can't call them no competition so how do you beat the Bills they are getting they better. are so that's what that's that's things you have to look at these teams are getting better you can't sleep on them but you got I'm them. Not. you got the Titans Steelers are not sold on I would never be sold on the Steelers. I'll always be sold on their defense, all right? So you have those teams coming up. Uh, the Broncos, like I said, they have their defense. That's coming back strong. Offense, we'll see what they're able to do. Um, hmm. Other than that, all the other teams there, you got it. So hear me out on this. The Bills, how do you beat the Bills? You take away stuff on Diggs. They have no run game. Hmm. But are you going to say that next year? We don't know what the running game situation is going to be next year. That, I give you that. However, this is what I'm noticing about the Bills. If you look at the way that Josh Allen played all season, Mr. Big Arm Allen, 400-yard games here, 500-yard games here, four touchdowns here, right? What happened when he played Kansas City? Not once, but twice. He has not beaten the Chiefs in his career. He's 0-3 against Kansas City right now. I mean, how long has he been in the league? Three years? Three or four years? Not three years. Give him some time. Fine. He can have as much time as he needs. But here's the thing. Why you're adapting, we're also adapting to you. Where was, like, Stefan Diggs had a great game, great regular season. What happened when he got in the playoffs against Kansas City? He disappeared. Yeah, they, one, Cole, one, Cole Beasley, if I'm not mistaken, Cole Beasley was their second leading receiver. And Cole Beasley was also hurt, so let's not let's not forget that portion either. <laughs> okay, once again, he was hurt. And he's their second leading receiver. So they also had they had they had a take away digs. They had receivers what? there. They had receivers there that uh, ended up being injured. So John Brown was injured. Cole Beasley was injured. Those guys did not come back one hundred percent. So you got Josh Allen out there with just Stephon Diggs, really, who's not you know limping on one leg. You know what I mean? But still. During the regular season when y'all played them, mm-hmm. you won 26 to 17. All right. You won good. You did. And in the playoffs, y'all show who you were. But I would not sleep on these bills, man. I would not sleep on Josh Allen. I'm not sleeping on Josh Allen. I just think he doesn't have it. He's missing that it factor. Like, great example. Baker Mayfield, as long as they're in the fight, he's going to go out swinging. Not going to overthink it. He's going to play his game. Josh Allen, when he's in the fight, he's overthinking it. He threw an interception in his shoulder. You know what? I want to I wanna agree with you, man. I want to. Josh, <laughs> to me, and it's not, I'm not going to say he doesn't have enough agree heart. With you, though. This is why I can't agree with you. Why? Josh Allen made the big jump last year. All right, look, his 2019 season, he only passed with 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. This 2020 season, this guy jumped to 45,000 yards passing and 37 touchdowns with 10 interceptions. If you think this man is going to play the same way he did last year, you got another thing coming. He, he All grew. right. He, absolutely he grew. And you know what that gunslinger did when he grew? He grew himself at home on the couch. He, <laughs> am I right or wrong? You Let's, okay, you want to about talk about it. Let's look at Mahomes' first year starting. His numbers took a super deplete, but he went out and got a Super Bowl. His first year starting? His Jeez. first year where he started. 
Did, did he not he win MVP? Fifty touchdowns and like forty some th- uh, four thousand some odd yards. MVP. MVP. No Super Bowl rings. What he do the following season? He missed four games with a knee injury, threw for less touchdowns and less yards. Went out won a Super Bowl. You can't always go out there and sling that ball and take that he, risk and take that advantage. He was injured. He was injured, but he came back. So he, respect, respect to him for coming back. Now, did he kind of get? Did he kind of get back in the game playing shape? Yes, he did. Okay. Yes, he did. And y'all but had see, the that rotation there too. You, you, he did. But you can't always take those big plays. If you're constantly looking for that deep ball, guess what? Somebody's gonna pick it off eventually. You can't always do that. Back. Super Bowl this year. Yes, <laughs> a lot. He learned. He learned. So <laughs> let me let me not let me pull this back and start running like ten extra yards for no damn reason. <laughs> Throw the ball away. <laughs> I will say this about Josh Allen: he has moxie. He's missing the attitude. He has the, he has the swagger. I will give him that. He's missing the attitude. No matter what, you don't. he doesn't go out there and say, oh, we down by 10? It's game time. Let's get it together. No, he does not. If you look at the way we beat them in a the regular season and then we won 17 to 26, look when they scored their last couple touchdowns. They got blown out for majority of the game, three quarters. Then for, in the fourth quarter, we're like six minutes to go, four minutes to go. Then they started to score. You don't got that attitude. You don't have it. You And I mean, no no disrespect to him, but he just don't got it. Now, he gets that attitude. Oh, yeah. The Brown, the Bills will be something to reckon with. But until he gets that attitude, no. And then my, the, the Titans. Let's talk about the Titans. The Titans signed to me one of the best defensive picks that you can probably get this offseason. And that's Bud Dupree. And the reason why I say that is, look at the Steelers' defense. Bud Dupree went out. The Steelers went down. They lost what five games straight, four games straight. That wasn't that wasn't because of the defense. That was all offense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hey, know what you're saying, but that offense you, was straight up. No, I but the, their defense can stop nobody either. Well, what what are they, they going to stop them for? Offense can't do shit. You got Juju want to, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I can't talk because we we try to sign that guy. <laughs> you did. That was stupid. But continue. <laughs> One stupid, think it was a smart choice, went about it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Allen, give him time, they'll be there. But he got to get that attitude. Now, back to the Titans. The Titans, they need wide receivers, in my personal opinion, because you got Brown over there. You got one receiver, and that's Brown. Now, you signed Bud Dupree on defense. The, def- the defense wasn't bad. It's offensively. What can you do besides run Derrick Henry? Because guess what happened? We keyed in on the run. We stopped the run. We heard it all season long. Kansas City is horrible against the run. Just run the ball down their throats. Couldn't, couldn't we'll, do nothing against it. Well, we'll see what happens with the Tennessee YFC situation. Uh, Corey Brown, for example, uh, did mention him. He's no longer with the team. Uh, oh, he man. Did, uh, he did, yeah, it was a Jets, if I'm not mistaken. So he's not on the team anymore. So there you go. Now if they're able to get receivers. They gonna need it. Then it's gonna be a different story. They're able to get receivers or develop what they have. They still have AJ Brown. So yeah, that's who I'm talking about when I said Brown. AJ Brown. He, so you got AJ Brown. He's, he's still a beast. He reminds me the most of Julio in the league, just because his physicality, his speed. He reminds me most of him. So y'all have to watch out for him. All right. And he's, he's like six two, I think. I think he's like six two. Six two six two six three. So somewhere around that. He's a, he's, a, he's a nice physical receiver, man. So I will not sleep on the Titans either, only because the defense has gotten better, like you said, with Bud Dupree. That's a hell of a piece. He, he'll be a better add-on than Jadavion Clowney was. So y'all have to yes, be aware. <laughs> aware. Yes, he will. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you see those guys twice, right? The Titans? Mm-hmm. No, it's just once. So we you see the once? Broncos twice, the Raiders twice, and the Chargers twice. All right, so I got them mixed up. Hey, but the Chargers... Mm-hmm. Young team, but don't sleep on neither. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Melvin Ingram's coming to visit Kansas City this week. Yeah, I don't mean I was going to sign him. He can visit all he wants to. What, are you going to get some barbecue and leave? No, see, the way I see it is we sign Ingram. That gives you Ingram, Clark, 
and Jones. Now, the Chargers only have Bosa on one end. Well, they'll go the opposite way of Bosa. They just cut Casey Hayward. So who are they going to have out there in the secondary getting burned by Tyreek Hill? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I'll say this. I don't want to hear nothing about Tyreek Hill burning nobody because he didn't show up in the Super Bowl. I don't want to hear it anymore. If you are being double covered every time the snap I goes off. Hear it. Come on, man. He's oh, what? Man. He what? 5'11"? 5'9"? He got height. <laughs> he got height. We didn't for even say that. Come on, man. 5'11", man. He's short man. for a that's receiver. A good solid height, but I don't think he's 5'11". But that's a good solid height. <laughs> he like 5'9", five, 5'8", five, on a good day. You know Somewhere what? in that range. You know what? Just because he was acting the way he was and talking the way he was, somebody took his ass. <laughs> mm. Mm. Didn't your team fall victim to that too? <laughs> hey, they, he, he didn't do this. No, I'm fine. Oh, okay. He didn't do this. We good. <laughs> I'm going to say this about Mr. Hill. Next year, he's going to have a, an outstanding season. And he's going to prove everyone that says he's not that fast or that good. He's going to prove them wrong. He's going to find his – you know what? If I was him, I would call up Jerry Rice. How do I beat a double team? Uh, call up Chris Carter. Call up Randy Moss. Get, call up Terrell Owens. He might have well just call Terrell Owens because his attitude is the same way. Once I'm signed, I'm signed. You know what? I heard that. So, I mean, call T.O. So that's going to be his mindset here's, right there. Here's my thing about his once I'm signed, I'm signed statement. You just gave half a billion dollars to Patrick Mahomes. You also just signed Chris Jones the year prior to that for a ridiculous amount of money. Then you signed Kelsey for a ridiculous amount of money. I think these guys are getting like, uh, 120 something odd million a year over the next three to four years, give or take. So, one, he just came off of his rookie contract. He has not really had a bad season. And on top of it, his numbers only got better since he's been in the league. Now, could he restructure this contract? Absolutely. But he, whatever personal reasons he had for not doing it, whatever family reasons or whatever he chose not to do it, he chose not to do it. There's guys out there making more money on our roster than he is. So I understand him making him making that statement. If I'm making half a million dollars and I want to keep my team so we can go win a couple more Super Bowls, you best believe I'm about to restructure my contract. He ain't. That is the downfall right there. He's not. He what was he? We we gave him an extension for three years, 56 million. We gave Chris Jones, I can't remember the full details of that contract, but it was somewhere of $95 million. Upward of that. Travis Kelsey was, I think, three years, 60 some odd million. So 500 million, 95 million, and 60 some odd million dollars. Between the three of them, they can restructure that contract. 56 million, I can't. I can't do that. Hey, right, well, we'll see what happens, man. I think he needs to restructure. You guys get some more money. That's what you need. That's what you need when it comes to the offseason moves. So if he does that, he does that. If he doesn't, I got a problem looking ahead. Nah, I think I think Kansas City goes out. They play hard. They get back to the Super Bowl and win. They win the Super Bowl. He will con- he will redo his contract. He will reconstructure it. He will take that cut for salary. He will find a way. Because here's the thing. Right now, with your honest opinion. If you're Tyreek Hill, outside of Kansas City, where's the best chance you got to go win a Super Bowl? Where's the best chance you got to fit in that system? <laughs> Doing what he does. He has to stay in Kansas City. I'm not saying that he can't fit with other other team. Kansas City is his best chance to win a Super Bowl because the way he plays fits with Mahomes. So he really has nowhere else to look. And that's in my honest opinion watching him play. So if y'all keep the band together, y'all keep the band together. I mean, 16 0, that is a high list serve, but I'm going to let you keep it. All right. <laughs> Don't forget about the 14 and 2. 14 and 2, that's still a high list serve. I'm going to let you keep it. All right. <laughs> hey, it is what it it's is. It's possible. It is what it is. All right. But, hey, so I thank you for coming on, man. We see what you got here for your Kansas City Chiefs, your outlook. Hopefully, you guys can make it back to that level of winning Super Bowls again while you got my homes on this big deal. 
but we'll see how these guys go. We'll see how they play. I'm looking, I'm curious. I'm ready to see how this is going to happen. I want Patrick Mahomes to win an MVP. I'm just such a fan of the talent and the youth that these guys have over there, especially with Patrick Mahomes over there. So I'm ready. But hey, like I said, thank you for coming on. I'm going to send you off the right way with opinionated facts. We'll be back again. We have some more teams coming up. You guys get ready. Get ready to love it. We out. Peace. All right, so we got that there.